So you guys wanted a video where I showed you guys more uh, in person at that moment in time decision making so it seems like the course is pretty empty right now that's kind of one of the reasons why i can't really do these voiceovers because if it's too busy i'm obviously not going to take people's time up by recording myself talking but yeah it seems like it's pretty empty right now so we'll see how many holes we can do this but yeah let's talk about what we have for this approach shot into the screen okay immediately when i walk up to my ball obviously i really can see the pin position uh, just pointing out what the hazards that I might want to avoid are. It's 73 yards to the pin, so I know short is definitely no-go, but over here behind is no-go as well, so I probably can't hit any more than like 80 yards and any shorter than 65. <laughs> so usually what I try to do is I give myself a window of distance that I can hit. Um, sorry, struggling. So even without a yardage book, you can, I mean, I play this course often enough, so I know like what's behind the green, what's in front of the green, and most of the time you can visually see that. So if you know exactly what's behind and in front of the green, you can kind of create a window of like, for instance, on this hole, I need to avoid the bunker, which is any shorter than 65, there's a chance of going in the bunker. And I know that past the pin, there is a slope like over the green, so I don't want to get it too far either. So I create a window for myself, which is be be between 65 to 80 yards. So then I have a little bit of leeway in my club choice. So right now I've got 140 yards. I know that I need at least 125 to the front, which is water hazard. So obviously no shorter, giving that like a five yard leeway, like 130. So this leeway for this green is between 130 to 150. So I've got quite a big leeway there. So that gives me a bit of room to swing more freely. I know people always talk about like being super accurate and choosing a specific number, but I think sometimes, obviously I still know I need to hit it 140, which is the number to the pin, but giving myself a bit more leeway, I know that even if I miss it a little bit or catch it way too good, I still have a chance of being on the green. I think part of knowing your distances, an important part, is also knowing like what's your average, which obviously we call that an average for a reason, like you're not going to hit every shot perfectly the same, context is going to be a little bit different, you know, conditions can change as well, grass can change how far a ball flies, so you need to know like if you miss it, how far it's going to go. So for instance, like let's say I have a 7 iron which carries 150 on average. I know that if I hit a really good one, and this is like off grass, not off tee obviously, if I hit a really good one, I could maybe carry it up to 160, but that would like mean me really going for it, which I rarely ever do. So I would range it between 140 on a miss to 155. So I know that if I give myself this little leeway of a green, when I know like, okay, if I have issues, for instance, choosing what club to hit into a green, and giving myself this range of distance versus one specific distance allows me to choose the club better because I know like if I miss it, this is the distance I'm going to go and I'm still going to be on the green.
lot of times people might tell you like hey don't focus so much on the miss like you have to focus on what you have to do but a lot of times go golfers are playing for the miss because you need to know that you're not going to hit you're going to hit misses more often than you're going to hit like perfect shots so you need to know how to accommodate for that and how to make your misses better So with today's green conditions, I know I can be a bit more aggressive because obviously it's just going to get stuck and not going to roll much. People always talk about how golf is like 90% mental and I think part of it is also not just like being mentally ready but giving yourself that mental clarity and mental freedom to be able to swing the club freely when you give yourself a bigger window versus you know just limiting to like I have to hit this 130 yards when you give yourself a bigger window in your body you feel more free to be able to just swing at it because you know that if you miss it you're still on the green if you hit it over I mean if you hit it pure you're still on the green I think a lot of times people do underestimate like the importance of being able to stand there and know that like you have the freedom to miss it a little bit which I mean like I said you miss a shot a lot of times in golf so it's so hard when you stand there and you're like oh I have to hit this perfect like this has to be a perfect shot or I'm gonna be in the bunker or in the water or something like that so giving yourself more freedom to swing is definitely very important. So this is also why knowing the pin position is very important because that makes a huge difference in how you create your little distance gap. Um, obviously if the pin is behind, you have more space short and if the pin's in front, you have more space over the pin. So that gives you a better idea of like how much you can miss it versus you know just assuming like 10 yards behind and 10 yards short because sometimes 10 yards behind is a no-go zone or 10 yards short, it's a no-go zone. So you need to figure out where the pin is and that's going to help you make a better decision as well. So here having 174 yards to this pin, obviously it's in the center so you have space short and over but behind there's a huge slope and if you go past the green it's a no-go zone. If you land it up here, chances are it's going to bounce over. My ball landed right here so I didn't hit it like super good but normally it will bounce forward so I would be right around pin high. So like I hit the club that is supposed to carry about 165 to a 174 pin. With today's condition, I know that like if I don't hit it really good, I'm going to be in the front of the green. But at the same time, it's like, yeah, front of the green is putting uphill. 
if I took one club more, if I hit that good, chances are I'm going to be over the green and I know that it's like not where I want to be. So I would much rather be short of the green and give myself an uphill putt. So like I said just now, conditions affect as well because the place that I was at was really wet. So I was between hitting a 58 degree wedge and my 52, which technically I should have hit the 58. But if I do, I will take a bigger divot, which probably the ball is not going to go as far and I have a higher chance of like hitting too much of a divot and the ball is going to go really short. Whereas with the 52, I'm able to hit more of like a chip shot, which allows me to have a cleaner contact with the ball. So obviously with everything I'm saying, like you need to be able to know your game. Like you can't just, I mean, I don't expect a beginner to know what's going to happen, like, you know, in what conditions, uh, what's their miss, how far they're going to hit a miss. Like that's obviously things that you need to basically do your homework about your own game so that you know your game better and then you're able to make better decisions. But yeah, at the end of the day, that's why we practice. That's why golf is so hard. And that's why there's so much room for improvement every single time. So right now I've got 147 yards, playing 149 to the pin. Um, almost exactly what I said about the 7 iron just now, like giving myself a, way, a leeway of like 155 to 140. So 140 is definitely going to be enough to reach the front of the green because the pin's in the center. So right here I know like 7 iron is the club and I don't have to like do anything crazy. I just have to hit a regular shot and hopefully if I hit a good one, it's going to be close to the pin. So one of the reasons why when we look at yardage books, we want to know like all the distances of everything is because, well, at least personally for me, so that I know exactly how far it is to reach everything. So like for instance, if that's like 135 and I know the minimum of the 7 iron is going to be 140, I don't even have to worry about that bunker. So yeah, just knowing this information in my head allows me to swing more freely because like I said, like I know like a bad shot is still not going to be in the bunker. So I don't even, I don't even have to worry about that. Like that's completely out of my mind. So. Okay, so the approach shot was hit from like somewhere there, but if we look at this green from this perspective, 
it would be very hard to swing freely if you do not know all the information. So the first thing that I would like to know is how far it is going to be to carry this. Because once I carry this, this bunker is obviously completely out of play, right? Then the rest, you can see the pin position today. Although it is in the center of the green, you might think that you have the biggest fairway. I mean, biggest green. But if you miss it right, the bunker is right. If you miss it left, there's a bunker left. And there's a huge slope there which you don't really want to be at either. So you can see how if you don't know the information, it's going to be very hard to swing freely because you can't hit it short, you can't hit it over, you can't miss left, you can't miss right. So if you know the information that of all the bunkers of what you need to carry and you only need to focus about hitting it directionally wise, like the right direction, it also takes away one of your worries because you're like, okay, no matter what the distance, I know it's going to be right. Then you don't have to worry about like, oh, now I have to worry about the front bunker, the left bunker, the right bunker. That, that's just way too much worrying and not enough swinging off the golf club. So with all that being said, similar to last week's video where I talked about finding fairways, I hope you can kind of see how as a professional golfer, sometimes what we're trying to do is make the game easier for us. We try to hit the biggest part of the fairway, we try to give ourselves the best chance, not making it more complicated by being so specific when we don't need to, giving ourselves more freedom to be able to swing freely at the ball. Over here, you can clearly see I'm not in a good position. I can't really go for the green, there are lots of hazards and basically there's no play here. Me pulling out the 3 wood here is basically trying a shot that I think maybe in some situation in a tournament I might need to use this shot and it would be great if I could practice this right now and make sure that I can actually control the trajectory of this 3 wood which was what I was trying to do hit it in between those trees making sure that I do not clip any of them because if I do it was definitely going in the hazard Is that necessarily the smart play? Definitely not However, if I were to be put in a similar situation in the tournament now and I need to pull off that shot, I now have the confidence to be able to pull it off. That being said, there's always a time and place for you to hit those crazy shots that yes, might feel amazing if you pull it off, but you also know there's a higher percentage of you not pulling it off. But that is going to be 10% of the time and not 90% of the time trying to pull off a miracle shot. Overcomplicating golf is just going to make it very difficult for us and we're not going to enjoy it. The more frustrated we get playing golf, the worse our score is going to get and then the cycle continues because we're going to be frustrated because we hit a bad score. Make sure that you give yourself the best opportunity, know your distances well, try to give yourself a distance gapping for each of the clubs in your bag so that next time, no matter where the pin is, no matter what the distance is, you have a little gapping, a little leeway for you to be able to choose the club that you know you can hit a regular shot, a missed shot and a pure shot and still hit it on the green. The more greens you hit, the easier golf gets. Thanks for watching and catch you guys next time.